All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is going to be the TWG overview, which will be kind of a, an overview of not only how the TWG within the phase consortium is structured, but it will involve a technical overview as well. So here is your uh, current um, uh, face officers list uh, for the TWG. You have myself as the, uh, um, the chair and Ben Brosco with uh, Adacore as vice chair. So the technical working group um, uh, operates under the uh, steering committee. Uh, we have multiple subcommittees. Each is responsible for a different aspect of the uh, face technical standard. Um, we have uh, general enhancements. They're the ones that are uh, responsible for program language mappings, um, IEL uh, management, um, things like um, the, the IOSS, PCS, PSSS. You have your operating system uh, subcommittee. They're responsible for everything OSS, which if you don't know what OSS is, we'll get into that later. But basically, they're responsible for the operating systems aspect of the phase technical standard. Uh, for security concerns, you have the security subcommittee. Uh, airworthiness concerns, uh, airworthiness uh, guidance subcommittee for graphics, graphics subcommittee, um, everything having to do with the transport uh, layer uh, involved in the technical standard. You have a transport subcommittee, uh, CBM, uh, they develop and maintain the, CV, the CBM, aka the conformance verification matrix. You'll learn more about that in the conformance overview. Uh, then we have um, a standard subcommittee, and that's basically just a, a fancy way of saying um, it's the subcommittee leadership uh, along with the TWG leadership. Uh, we uh, use this as a forum to make decisions regarding the TWG as a whole and also use it to host our uh, biweekly uh, TWG CCB meetings to uh, adjudicate PRs and CRs against technical products. And that's about it for this slide. Um, what we're responsible for is basically all the technical aspects of the FACE consortium. Uh, we produce not only the, te the FACE technical standard, but the uh, FACE reference architecture, uh, any additional supporting technical documents, um, implementation guidance, and uh, basically any artifact that assists you in gaining um, uh, FACE conformance. Uh, we're also in, uh, responsible for the conformance verification matrix as well as the conformance verification matrix user's guide. Um, it does say on here that we um, uh, publish the shared data model. However, that's kind of a shared effort between us and the DIOG. Technically, we um, uh, publish it, but the DIOG is responsible for creating it and maintaining it. So just a little clarification on that one. All right, so now we're just going to go into the technical overview. Now that we've kind of, you know, given a brief overview of what the TWG in the FACE consortium um, is responsible for and how it is structured. So uh, what you probably learned in the business overview, uh, the overall FACE approach, you know, was to develop a technical standard for a software common operating environment designed to promote uh, portability and to create uh, software product lines across the military aviation domain. Uh, the aspects of the FACE approach are um, um, business processes and business drivers, technical processes, I'm sorry, technical practices to promote the development of reusable software components and to create a software standard to promote the development of portable, portable components. So that's, that's the why we're doing this. A um, little bit more uh, information, so um, kind of the current state um, of, of things uh, when it comes to aviation software particular, particular <laughs> particularly concerning um, barriers to portability. Right now we have a lot of software that um, has a lot of tight coupling and what I mean by that, um, there is no abstraction. Uh, when it comes to things like uh, transports, uh, graphics, um, device drivers, um, there's very little use of um, open interfaces. And so uh, what winds up happening is if you make a change to something, and an example I like to use is say you want to change the transport protocol in your system. That change is likely going to trickle down to the software application level, especially if they're making, you know, transport calls and handling, um, you know, protocol uh, decisions within the application. So that's our current barriers to portability and reusability. Um, what FACE uh, tries to tackle are those barriers to portability by kind of abstracting 
and using uh, defined interfaces for things like transport uh, graphics, uh, um, calls to device drivers, the, the operating system, et cetera. Um, therefore, um, you have a greater um, uh, sense of portability and scalability. Um, uh, bringing back the example of the uh, transport protocol, um, if you were to, you know, using it, uh, if you use a defined interface for all data movement, um, then if you decided later on you wanted to change the protocol that you're using to implement your transport layer, uh, that is likely not to affect the individual software application if they're using a defined API for the data movement. So you have greater, um, greater chance of achieving portability using those practices. So that brings us to the phase technical standard. Um, what is in it? What does it provide? Um, first and foremost, a software approach designed to tack, tackle barrier, the barriers, I can't talk today, to modularity, portability, and interoperability. It defines a reference architecture that uses standardized interfaces, and it provides the requirements for developing the uh, components that will reside within architectural segments. And I'll talk about more about the segments in just a moment. It defines a phase state architecture for describing all data that moves within the uh, reference architecture um, and the semantics uh, that define that data. There are IDL definitions for phase interfaces, and there are quite a few, and I'll go through those in just a little bit as well. And there are also, uh, also programming language mappings that take you from IDL to uh, four uh, unique programming languages, one being C, C++, ADA, and within ADA you have uh, 95 and 2012, and you also have Java. Um, and then within C++, there are a few uh, levels of the, um, I'm sorry, editions of the C++ standard that are supported in the, someone have a question? Okay, if you do not have a question, please make sure you are muted. Um, just as a courtesy to uh, others on the call. Um, also within the FACE technical standard, um, there is a set of OS profiles defined based on levels of criticality. Um, I'll go into more detail about these later, but they um, basically are divided into uh, general purpose, safety, and security levels. So I briefly uh, mentioned the term segments in the previous slide, and uh, what that means is the software approach that FACE took was to abstract uh, capabilities and services uh, based on um, in, into groupings called segments. And what I mean by that is depending on what your what a software application provides and the interfaces it needs, it can be um, uh, grouped into one of these segments. Um, as an example, like uh, you have at the top the portable component segment, and as you can see, it only uses uh, two interfaces one to the operating system and one to the transport. So if you have a, an application that only needs to move data and provide a service, it will likely meet the requirements of a port portable component segment. And then the structure that is created by connecting all these segments together, as well as its interfaces, is the foundation of the face reference architecture. And there's just an example of what it looks like, and we'll go more into the segments in just one moment. Uh, just a caveat to the, um, uh, the face architecture, um, or more importantly, the face computing environment, which is a realization of that architecture. Um, it is not meant to um, basically supplant current software um, subsystems, but merely provide an, an additional environment in order to integrate portable capabilities. So you don't have to go out and buy a whole new piece of hardware, buy a whole new uh, operating system. It's very likely that the operating system you have now uh, provides uh, the infrastructure that you need um, for the face computing environment. Now, there's no guarantee, but it, it, it is a likely scenario. And now just going through the face architectural, architectural segments and talking just a little bit about them before we go into more detail later. At the top, um, if you're looking at this from a top-down approach, which you have to, um, is the portable component segment. Once again, these are the uh, applications that are considered truly portable because they provide a service and really only need to m move data in, a, in, a, in addition to using um, operating system level calls. Uh, the transport service segment, this is where you're gonna abstract all of your uh, transport logic. Um, and you can do this in a variety of ways, uh, using one UFC, many, but, any, but all of your capabilities um, concerning how, um, how, the, how the face architecture moves data around is going to be within this segment. Um, the 
platform specific service segment. This is kind of like a hybrid one. Uh, it extends the portable component service uh, a portable component segment in the fact that it provides a service or a capability, but also can move data um, in and out of um, uh, the, the IOSS, which the IOSS or IO service segment is meant to provide uh, services to either provide or retrieve data from an external means. And what I mean by external means is it can be either hardware, a device driver, or uh, an external bus. And then you have your operating system segment. Your operating um, system segment is where you're going to have your programming language runtimes, um, your um, uh, time and space partitioning, your device drivers, your network stack, thing, you know, things like that. Like th this, is, this is how you uh, gain entry to your operating system um, uh, devices and capabilities. So face interfaces, so here are the major ones that are, are defined within the face technical standard. The first and foremost is the transport services interface. This is a data type specific interface that's meant to move data messages between applications in the PCS and PSSS. So basically, um, if you need to provide um, communication between PCS and PCS or between PCS and PSSS or vice versa, you are going to use the transport services interface and it is typed according to um, a specific modeled message, which you, we'll get into a little bit later as well. Um, and all logic having to do with my, moving that data is encapsulated within the, the UOCs that make up the transport services segment. And what, what I mean by UOCs is the software applications within the transport services segment. And you have the IO service interface, which provides an interface to provide data movement and uh, external access to and from devices or external hardware. We kind of touched on that in the last slide. Basically, if you need something from an external source or need to provide something to an external source, like uh, a message from a radio or a command to a radio, those are two popular examples, you're going to use an I.O. service or a software um, capability that uh, provides a service located within the I.O. services segment. And then the OSS interface, this just provides a standardized means for the software to use the services within the operating system and other capabilities related to the OSS. Um, if you're making POSIX um, um, uh, calls, um, this is how you um, get to it. The OSS is typically going to provide either a or uh, and or uh, uh, POSIX uh, interfaces for your software applications to use to um, execute their functionality. All right, some uh, base terms for, soft, um, for software. Um, any software component that resides in a face segment designed to the requirements for that particular segment is what we call a unit of conformance. Basically, a software application that is designed to the face technical standard. Sorry about that. Um, a, a piece of software may be referred to as a unit of conformance at any time during its life cycle. Um, it is not considered a conformant unit of conformance until it goes through the phase conformance program. Um, as a subset of units of conformance, you have um, um, UOCs that communicate with the TSS. If a UOC communicates with the TSS, it must provide what's considered a unit of portability supplied model which uh, rules for how to construct it is our feature within the face data architecture. Um, the, the ability to host and integrate face software components is dependent on what's called a face computing environment, which is an implementation of the following segments, the face TSS, the face IOSS, and the face OSS, as well as common services required for operation. So all the units of conformance that, that provide those four things are going to make up the face computing environment. And basically, face computing environment is just a fancy way of saying you have all of the capabilities there to integrate PCS and PSSSs, aka your capabilities and services. So diving a little bit more into um, uh, the individual segments, uh, starting with the portable component segments, um, this is where, once again, your applications that are truly uh, truly portable or considered as portable as possible are going to reside. 
They provide a service and uh, require only the operating system and the transport service, uh, more importantly, the, the TS API in order to migrate data. So if they have anything else, any other needs, like uh, uh, getting uh, data from a, uh, um, a radio, they are not going to um, be considered part of this segment. For the transport services segment, uh, this is where all your um, data movement is abstracted in terms of uh, capabilities. Um, it is, me, it provides me, an application. Yes. Sorry, Chris, I'm to interrupt. Um, looking at your the um, slides that are showing up, and it looks like there's some grayed out area at the very top. I don't know. Yeah, if that's that. uh, is that on yeah, purpose? That's, that's, no, I'm not doing it on purpose. It's the, the speaking thing. Um, I can't really do anything about it. I'll just try to move it as far away from the screen as possible. Sorry about that. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So continuing with the transport services segment, all transport and protocol specific functionality is encapsulated with, uh, within the software components contained within the TSS. And just some examples of the capabilities that can be provided within the TSS are distribution, uh, type abstraction, configuration, data transformation, message association, and there's quite a few more. Um, especially in the 3.0 standard, the, there, were, there are a few more capabilities defined uh, that, that a transport can implement, including uh, domain to, to domain capabilities. Let me check the chat because I just saw, okay, that's just saying that visibility is better. Okay, and this is just a uh, kind of a graphic example uh, showing things from kind of an integrator point of view. Um, and what I mean by that is, say you have three portable component segment UOCs. Um, the integrator using the transport services UOCs and the uh, uh, technologies that those allow, uh, the integrator can be a little bit flexible when it ter when it, in terms of what um, underlying um, mechanisms are used to move data. And so in this example, you have PCS1 that only needs to move data. So it um, uses the distribution capability and moves data using um, UDP sockets. And it does that by using the OS API. Uh, in the PCS2 example over on the far right, it also requires just the distribution capability. So it's going to implement a uh, TCP connection. And then in PCS3, um, you have a protocol translation uh, that happens here, most likely between PCS and PC PCS1 and PCS2, where it receives in uh, UDP and then translates it into a TCP uh, socket call. So here's just an example of some flexibility in the things that um, the TSS allows you to provide. Moving along to the platform specific services segment. So this is where um, your software components that are unique to the platform are going to be housed. Um, things, things that are dependent upon an ICD, um, things that uh, provide a common service like logging, device protocol mediation, uh, centralized configuration, things like that. Um, also graphic services, um, things that have to interface directly with a graphics driver are going to be provided uh, within, the, within this segment. And because of the array of different capabilities that can be uh, um, uh, encapsulated here, you have sub-segments within the PSSS. You have your platform-specific device services. This is where the majority of your PSSS UOCs are going to uh, reside, is in your device services. And what I mean by that is the things that um, provide uh, uh, movement of data between uh, a PCS and uh, and an external device or an external bus yeah, damn, but... via the IO, um, IO services uh, interface and the TS yeah. interface. Yeah. And then you have your platform specific common services. This is, you know, I use the examples of logging, uh, DPM, uh, centralized configuration, things like that. Um, and then your graphic services. Uh, now, graphic services can reside in your PCS as well, but the difference is, is whether they need direct access to the, the uh, graphics driver. 
if they require driver access, typically they're going to be um, reside in the PSSS. IO services segment. Now, this is the one where if you need to communicate with an external um, uh, piece of hardware, a device driver, or an external bus, you are going to have your capabilities for doing so encapsulated within the IO services segment. Um, each unique um, unit of conformance within the IOSS uh, provides a service uh, either to retrieve data um, or provide data um, to, a, to a bus um, or a device. Um, an example of this is if you uh, wanted to implement a service that uh, writes data out to a victory bus, you would, you would implement that software capability within the IO services segment. Operating service segment. So this is where the foundational system services and vendor supplied software is going to reside within your face computing environment. Um, it supports the execution of all the face components within your uh, face computing environment. All other segments rely on the operating system segment. It defines a set of APIs that provide a standardized means for face software to use the services within the operating system. And it defines the OSS interfaces uh, um, based on a series of profiles, general purpose, safety, and security. When it comes to uh, your POSIX and uh, A-Rank APIs, uh, general purpose being the most, uh, for lack of better terms, liberal when it comes to the um, function calls that you can um, use. Uh, safety is a little bit more stringent, and then security being the um, uh, most restrictive in terms of the things that you can use. Um, just an example of um, other capabilities that would be limited by profile. Um, time and space partitioning is required for safety and security profiles, whereas in general purpose, the only requirement is space partitioning. Time partitioning is considered an optional capability within the general purpose profile. And then in the graphic below, you have some examples of units of conformance that would um, uh, be provided by the OSS, because once again, this is a component-based standard, so everything is at the lowest software um, application or software component level. So UOCs that would be in the OSS would be uh, your health monitoring fault management uh, UOC, if you're using uh, POSIX to do your, um, um, your um, health monitoring. Programming language runtimes, this can be for C, C++, ADA, or Java. Uh, any component frameworks um, that would, would need to be provided. Uh, configuration services is another um, unit of conformance which also provides an API. And that API is available to all other uh, UOC types based um, regardless of segment. So that's just a little bit about the operating, um, operating system segment and the capabilities that it provides. So now that we've kind of gone down uh, a list of what all is in within the FACE technical standard, which once again, you have your segments, you have your requirements for uh, uh, designing and implementing units of conformance within those segments, um, as well as uh, best practices for how to do so. And then here's uh, just some differences between the two major standards that we have um, that we are uh, um, currently uh, maintaining. Uh, in uh, FACE 2.1, uh, the only optional interface was the type of abstraction interface for the TSS, and all the APIs were defined as a set of procedural functions. Uh, the only expectation that the integrators had um, um, were to uh, resolve uh, linkage with face libraries in addition to tailoring external client to specific uh, UOC needs. Now, face technical standard edition 3.0 uh, did a little bit of redesigning. Uh, one of the things is they added some more optional interfaces, one being lifecycle management interfaces for initialization, configuration, um, uh, connecting to a framework, thing, things of that nature. Uh, and then in the TSS, there were two other capabilities added, each that provides an API. One being component state persistence, which allows you to retrieve and store data. And then a transport protocol module, which allows for um, movement of data between TSSs residing on different domains or different pieces of hardware. Uh, the only exception uh, uh, regarding these optional interfaces is the TPM because it is considered an intra-segment uh, TPM where the others are considered uh, inter-segment. 
Um, main difference is, you know, of course, intra, you know, it's pretty much as the uh, prefix um, symbolizes, it is a um, API that is only called within the segment. Uh, configuration services was added to the OSS officially in edition 3.0, and it provides an API as well. And then uh, the face interfaces, uh, the programming language mappings specifically, took on a more object-oriented design to where face interfaces are no longer procedural interfaces. They are defined as a set of abstract um, definitions of interfaces to where the user or implementer must provide uh, the implementations or the concrete instances of those um, classes or um, uh, functions in the, in the case of C. Um, in addition to uh, moving forward with an object-oriented design, um, dependency injection was also introduced for Phase 3.0 in that if you are a user of an interface, you are expected to provide an injectable interface so that the integrator can provide you with a concrete instance of that interface in order to use. AI 2012 support was also added in addition 3.0, and the data face data architecture kind of changed things up a little bit. They introduced a new template and query language uh, for the use of creating uh, models designed to the face technical standard. Now we're going to talk a little bit about, about the face data architecture. And now this is only kind of a little bit of what's going to be covered in the face. Um, Face Data Architecture Overview, which I believe will be tomorrow. Um, so if you have any specific, like down in the uh, weeds questions, please save those for uh, the experts that will be going through all this tomorrow. Um, they um, will go into a little bit more detail as to the hows and whys. Uh, but this is just to provide more context as to what all is in the Face Technical Standard. So the Face Technical Standard also defines a face data architecture, and it consists of the following elements. One, a data model language. Two, a set of data model language binding, bindings that map uh, data model language elements to each of the supported programming languages, being, being C, C++, Ada, and Java. Um, the face data architecture also defines a shared data model, which provides the building blocks of all unit of portability supplied models, as well as domain-specific data models. Also, the face data architecture uh, consists of the rules for cons construction of UOP-supplied models, aka USMs, and domain-specific data models, aka DSDFs. Um, a little bit more about the shared data model. Uh, once again, it, it is the foundation for which all other models um, aligned to the FACE technical standard are um, created. Um, it, the USM is intended to extend the SDM and define uh, FACE unit supportability and describe the data that the UOP sends and receives. And then a DSDM is a, um, a way of capturing domain-specific semantics without defining specific software elements, aka UOPs. But it does define uh, message, messages as well as um, semantics for describing those messages. So the um, aspects that are produced by the um, face CWG, um, one, the face technical standard. Within the, the face technical standard, you have the, uh, the meta model and OCO constraints, um, which are, you know, basically govern how the USMs are constructed. You also have the uh, shared data model govern governance plan, which is a separate document. Uh, the face shared data model is also separately, um, separately published. Um, and then the two, um, two examples of uh, products um, that were built using um, everything I previously uh, stated are the UOP supplied model, and which is the one thing that is new to phase 3.0 is an integration model, which is built by system integrators. And here's just a, um, uh, an in-depth view of um, a uh, UOP supplied model. The aspects that are provided by the shared data model are going to be the conceptual data model, and the logical data model. Uh, what you are expected to provide within the USM um, that describe your data and the uh, software applications that are going to use it are the platform data model and the unit of portability model. And what you're expected to use this USM for is for things like uh, configuration, code generation, um, and things of that nature. Like I said, the face um, 
phase data architecture overview will explain these far better than I can. And here's just an, uh, an overview of all of the um, aspects defined in each of those model levels um, and what you're expected to add for your U UOP supplied model. Um, I won't go through all of them, but um, uh, take the conceptual data, conceptual model, for example. You're going to be, have defined in the shared data model a um, list of observables. And what you're expected to use those for in your UOP supplied model is for, in your conceptual model, to define entities and entity associations that um, uh, define um, um, elements that um, realize these observables. Um, down at the platform model, um, here's where you're going to have your IDL primitive types that are provided by the shared data model and what you're expected to do in your UOP supplied model. Um, further expand on your entities and associations, but also define IDL types that map to um, um, define types in your entities and associations and also define views for describing your data messages. And then in your UOP model, um, this is so, so solely where the USM comes into play. You are going to define platform-specific components and portable components um, and assign them ports depending on um, whether they are incoming outgoing messages, and those will map to a view, which is, in a sense, a data message. So once again, uh, the phase data architecture overview will go into these in a lot more detail and provide better explanation. So um, one question I get, um, or one popular question that gets uh, tossed around is, what are you expected to do with a USM? Well, here's how this, how this, is how this relates to the um, face reference architecture. Your USM generates this interface, the TS interface, um, because every TS interface is typed to a specific message. And once you um, are a little bit more familiar with the standard, you get a chance to see uh, some code and, you know, some types generated off of the USM, this will make much more sense. But this is how the USM fits within the face reference architecture. Uh, using your USM, this is your uh, just kind of a notional flow of um, uh, products to more products, uh, you build your model using your, you know, um, model editing tools by importing your face uh, shared data model and producing a UOP supplied model. And you can use other tools in order to generate code and your TS interfaces, um, as well as other artifacts um, if, if the tool allows it. Um, the uh, face conformance test suite is an option out there to be used to generate types and um, interfaces. And there are other tools out there um, that are provided by third parties um, that do the same thing, plus a little bit more depending on your, um, your needs. So just to kind of summarize everything that I've gone over, um, Face Technical Center defines a reference architecture. Um, its overall goal is to eliminate barriers of portability and encourage software reuse. There are, within the Face Technical Center, are face segments that are done defined to abstract functionality in order to further promote portability, and the FACE Technical Center also defines a set of best practices for um, creating FACE software components. At this time, we'll move on to uh, questions. I just saw the uh, one pop up in the chat. Has the process of adding new messages incrementally to a pre-existing FACE environment been streamlined in 3.0? Um, no, not exactly, because um, face, the Face Technical Center does not define messages within the standard. Um, this is um, at the uh, unit of conformance level. Um, the process for adding messages um, is relatively the same in 2.1 and 3.0. That sort of, uh, sort of answer your question. I know there's uh, technical standards out there that do define messages and in each uh, edition of the standard that comes out, uh, more um, messages are added, but the, um, uh, the purpose of the face technical center, and more specifically the face data architecture, is it allows uh, software suppliers um, and um, uh, integrators uh, to define 
their own messages. However, if you define a message, you have to, you know, define the semantics that go with it. So that further, um, you know, moves towards the need for a face data architecture. If we define the messages that you were, if we define all the messages that you were allowed to use within face, um, one, I'm sure we would be adding to it a lot, but also there would be no need for um, a, a face data architecture. Let's see, got a question from Mr. Linning. Uh, while compilers are generally off the shelf items, are the other tooling for using FACE generally available, especially with respect to shared data models and writing code? Um, good question. So the FACE shared data models are publicly available. Um, there's one for each edition of the FACE technical standard, and there are um, subsequent releases that are um, put out as well. Because the um, shared data model um, uh, committee under the DIOG, they are constantly adding new types and new rules, um, and it gets updated a lot. Um, there are third-party tools available. Uh, those are available on the FACE landing page. Uh, there's a place for uh, third-party tools that you can click on. And um, different vendors that have, you know, elected to have their um, links to their tools um, hosted on the FACE landing page um, have, have their um, links there. Um, as far as writing code, um, there is a, um, an example uh, face computing environment that is available to consortium members only right now, and that is the uh, BALSA source distribution. It provides working examples of all the uh, face segments with the exception of the OSS. It doesn't com provide a complete OSS because it's, you know, meant to uh, run on Linux and be open source, but it does provide the configuration services um, uh, interface within the OSS as well as an HMFM. And it's available to uh, consortium members and soon the public. Uh, it is currently going through Distro A um, review, but it is there for people to um, kind of gain a better understanding of what they're um, what they're expected to provide um, and uh, give them assistance on uh, getting started with FACE, as well as providing them um, an example environment to use for testing purposes because all of the uh, UOCs defined within BALSA do work. Uh, did that answer your question, Mr. Lenning? Yes, thank you. And also, with respect to writing code, you have the uh, reference implementation guide that accompanies each technical standard. Um, there's also an integrator's guide coming, and then there's a software supplier getting started guide that is out there as well. Okay, well, thank you to everyone that joined. I hope this was informative. Uh, it's kind of, you know, drinking from a fire hose um, for those of you that are brand new. Um, but I assure you, uh, you know, as you use the technical standard more, a lot of this will make sense and you will see the value of using the FACE technical standard. Um, if you ever require BALSA access, uh, please get in touch with me. Um, Nick just asked if the slides are going to be posted. Yes, I'm posting them today. Um, so these will be available on the TWG um, page. So thank you again, everyone, for joining, and I hope you have a wonderful day and that um, all the follow-up meetings uh, the next few days are productive.